Well, hello, this is Adam and welcome to Rare Classic Cars. Today we're going to try a new series and that is repairs that are hard but shouldn't be hard on your, well, let's call them classic cars. So some people would say this is not a classic car. I'm going to beg to differ. This is my 84 Oldsmobile Omega Brome. Super cushy. If you want something that's cheap and fun, these seats in here are actually super comfortable. The car has a ton of room on the inside and it gets good gas mileage. About 30 miles per gallon freeway, maybe even a little more, 31, 32 with this 2.5 liter Iron Duke. It has great air conditioning too with the pancake style compressor. These were not as good as the A6 style compressors, but when they work, they still work really well. They just tended to have seals that would leak. In any case, let's talk about that repair that is hard but shouldn't be. And that on this particular vehicle, and it was common to many of these GM Iron Duke engines until they went to electronic ignition in 1987, and they became known as the Tech 4. That was also the year that they went to the serpentine belt. You can see this doesn't have a serpentine belt. It has individually adjustable belts and pulleys. But that is the distributor cap and rotor on this car. A notoriously challenging repair. And where is the distributor cap? Can you find it? No, it's not there. No, it's not there. It is down there. Can you see it? That's it. Down there. What an awful placement for a distributor cap. And you can see there's just no room to get in back of there. What you have to do is undo the motor mount and kind of rock the engine forward to get the distributor cap off. What in the world were the engineers thinking? And actually when I bought this car, that was one reason why it didn't run very well, was because somebody had put, actually put Delco Packard wires on there and new spark plugs, but it ran rough because nobody had changed the distributor cap and it was like 30 years old and all corroded and pitted. I changed that and it ran like a champ. So that is terrible on these and it doesn't matter on the S10 pickups because it was very easy to pretty much get to those. But on these with the front wheel drive setup, it's kind of challenging to get to. So if you want a few skin knuckles, you can do that. And this car has another repair that is ridiculously challenging for what it is. Maybe not by today's standards, but for the time. And that is, see the oil filter there? Right there? That is a pain in the butt to get off and not make a mess. You kind of have to reach your hand around and wiggle in. And it's unnecessarily difficult, I will say. Probably one of the most difficult oil changes of the era. I mean, it's not hard, but it's just hard to get in there and not make a mess. And you're cleaning up a bunch of crap then consequently. So these X cars, I don't think that GM quite knew what they were doing by this point. Well, they did make it easy for you to prop the hood vertically, as you can see. You just put the prop rod in this position as opposed to this position. And then you get this near vertical hood and you can work on things. There are some easy things in this car too. The thermostat is super easy. Uh, I'm not gonna take this off because the car is hot right now. I've been driving it because the air conditioning is great and it's hot. But you undo this radiator cap. I shouldn't say radiator cap, thermostat housing cap here. And there's a thermostat and you just pull it out with your hand. You can pop a new one in. It's kind of the a strange design. I haven't seen that on another car aside from these Iron Dukes. I'm trying to remember, maybe the V6 Fieros also had those. The Fiero had that kind of thermostat housing cap thing. Actually, I think it was just the four cylinders. Hard to recall. It's been a while since I've had a Fiero. But other than that, these Iron Dukes are generally pretty reliable. The ignition module underneath that distributor cap sometimes goes bad. And that, as you can imagine, you saw the distributor cap, you can imagine what 
the repair is like for the ignition module, which is under that cap. Thankfully, I haven't had to do that on this car. But that would not be fun. I've had those fail a few times on other Iron Duke engines, my Cutlass Sierra, or my Gutless Sierra, I should say, that failed. But aside from those, well, let's say most of these repairs on this car are not too bad, at least by modern day standards. You can see the oxygen sensor is right there and easy. The spark plugs are pretty easy to get to on this. You have to replace the blower fan. That's not horrible to get to. Alternator, eh, that's kind of a little tricky to get out there, but not too bad. You're getting it out from the bottom. I don't think you're getting it out from the top with that bracket here. So I will complete this video by letting you listen to the dulcet tones of the Iron Duke's engine. Oh yeah. And let's put the uh, pancake style compressor on. Ooh, yes. There she is. It looks in the video like it's slipping, but it's not. Just the way the uh, camera shoots it. Nice and cold. And unfortunately, that's how these engines sounded. This one's actually a relatively quiet one, if you can believe it. They're very durable in general, just not very powerful. Oh yeah, icy cold. Super cold air conditioning in these. Well, there you have it. What are your favorite repairs on these classic cars that are challenging, but shouldn't be? Why don't you put a comment in the comment section and let me know. And until then, you can admire this 84 Ozil Omega with fuel injection. You didn't get that badge if you had the 2.8 liter V6 because it was not fuel injected. It had an unfortunate two barrel carburetor that wasn't all that great either. By the way, one thing I recommend if you have one of these X or A cars is the steering racks. Actually, a lot of these GM cars, the steering racks tended to go bad. I make sure I put clean fluid in my power steering pump. I siphon it out and make sure it's got clean fluid. You don't want dirty fluid in there, then it's effectively acting like a cutting fluid inside your power steering rack. Thankfully, this one is okay, but this does have a rebuilt rack on it. Thanks again for watching. I should say one last thing that's challenging to repair on these that shouldn't be, and that was the replacing the battery. Not horrible, but It'll take, of course, the typical hold down clamp off. Then you have to move this brace out of the way. Then you've got to take this air cleaner duct off. And then you kind of still have to finagle it around this cruise control servo and the radiator hose here and get it into place. Not horrible, but certainly not like some of the old cars. Thanks for watching. And I have to say, most people aren't going to consider this a true classic car, and it's not. But you know what? For a couple thousand bucks that I paid, this Omega sure gives me a lot of smiles. And damn, the air conditioning works great. It's about 90 degrees. I don't even have the AC on all the way, and I'm freezing. I'm actually going to have to turn it down if I stop this video. Because it is cold, cold, cold. And you get a little bit of a flare of yesteryear. Very comfortable seats, tons of room inside here. Hope you enjoyed the video.